Hello everyone, welcome back to part 4 of web development with Python and Django tutorials here. In this tutorial, we'll check out the admin functionality of Django and cover its benefits. Before continuing, please like and subscribe my channel, this will really help me to continue creating these tutorials. Thank you for doing this. Okay. In the previous tutorial, we saw that we could create records in database by using the Django shop. But this is not the fastest and most convenient way that we would like to use all the time. You usually want to get full access to manage the things through the user interface. Here comes the Django admin panel. We only need to take all the benefits it gathers. Uh, here is an example. Every Django project should use a custom user model. The official documentation of Django states that it's highly recommended. Uh, where it is? Yeah, if you are starting a new project, it's highly recommended to set up custom user model, even if the even if its default user model is sufficient for you. This model behaves identically to the default user model, but you'll be able to customize it, it in the future if the needs arises. That's what this tutorial is about. And they are right, I learned this the hard way. I created this website from scratch. I'm talking about my pylessons.com website. Uh, if, if you haven't seen this, this one, where I have all the functionality for as a blogger and this is cool and so i created this website from scratch by using the default user model there were many relationships with the profile and another table where i stored another user sensitive information my code complexity grew because of the additional user relationships added by time and then i decided to create a custom user while doing this in a project middle stage i faced many issues Finally, I deleted all the databases and wrote code to correctly move data from the old database to the new one. And I encountered more problems than you can even expect. So I hardly recommend starting with a custom user from the beginning. This is all, all also mentioned in Django documentation uh, in this page. Due to limitations of Django dynamic the dependency feature of swappable models, the model references by off user model must be created in the first migration of its application. It's usually called the initial. Otherwise, you'll have dependency issues. This sounds good. Yeah, that's exactly what I faced and I faced many problems. This is the reason why I'm creating this tour and why I'm talking about this. So I, I could help you to avoid this issue. It can be priced in terms of time if you move on with default user model, but I'll go a step further and say without hesitation, you are straight up crazy not to use a custom user model upfront. Remember my words, you'll regret that if you're watching this tutorial. You might ask, why do you need a custom user model in Django? So, uh, when starting a project with a custom user model, stop considering whether it is the right choice for you, for your project or not. Keeping all user-related information in one model eliminates the need for additional or more complex database queries to opt in related model data. On the other hand, storing application specific user information in a model associated with a custom user model might be more appropriate. This allows each application to specify its user's data requirements without conflicting with or relating the assumption of other applications. It also means that your user model should be as simple as possible focused on authentication and meet the minimum requirements that Django expects customized user model to meet. So I'll show you an example with a standard user model. We have only specific fields here and other uh, we would like to have user profile description, for example, image and etc. While using the standard user model, we must create another profile user model where we would store this information. But while using the custom user model, we can hold all this information in a single table in, in the single row. So I think it's clear why we need a custom user model in Django. This tool will teach us how to create a custom user model and its API in Django. So uh, let's go ahead to the coding stuff as all of you waits. 
Same as we did in our second tutorial where I created our first application, we need to do the same stuff now. We create a user's application. So uh, I, I write up python manage.py manage and start app and I'll call it users. Yeah, as you can see, it appeared here. That's easy. So, so now open the project settings file uh, and find a definition for the installed apps. It should be here. And then add a new user line at the end of list. Yes, I'll, I'm showing you right now. Users. And this way we'll register uh, a user's application. But now it's different compared to our main application. We need to create a model for our users. So straightforward, let's go to our users new application, to our models, and let's do something here. So at first, it's required to have some kind of authentication. So uh, I need to import from Django.contrib of models. I need to import abstract user. You can see there's two of these, abstract and base user. Uh, I decided to use abstract user, but it's also possible to use abstract base user. By default, abstract user doesn't have email, status, and description fields. They will be customized for my purposes. Later, there won't be any issues with uh, adding more of them for us. So the default Django user model uses a user to identify the user uh, during authentication uniquely. To use an email address instead of username, you must create a custom user model by splitting it into abstract user or abstract based user. So uh, you, you need to test this by yourself to understand it better way. But in simple terms, there is two options. There is abstract user, we use this option if we are satisfied with the existing fields in the user model and want to remove the username field. An abstract based user, we use this option to start from scratch when we are creating your brand new user model with all new fields. Here I need to create a class that is called custom user and here is my abstract user. First, I, I will I'm creating a custom field that I'm calling a, a status. And here I'll create a three statuses. And this will be regular that is equal to regular. And there will be two more. Let's create them. Sorry, like that. And And I'm creating subscribe, 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 and additional one. I'll create a how we'll call it. It's it will be an admin as a moderator. So moderator. Let's go. Cool. Now I need to create another field that is an email field and models.email field. Of course Django has it and we want it to be unique as true. Next I'm creating a status and oh shit what I pressed accidentally uh, doesn't matter for now. Let's exit this. Status will be models uh, dot char field and here will be max length of I don't know 100 here we choose a status uh, to be a oh yeah we have to say the choices choice choices is equal to status this means that we'll have a get a drop down list and our default will be regular Like that. Now we need another field uh, that we'll call a uh, description. Description. Description, and this is a uh, simply models text field. Text field. 
with a name of description and max maximum length will be not not too long single hundreds that's our profile custom description about us default will be blank and blank blank equals to true that this means that it can be empty and uh, as i said every model it's recommended to have some kind of string field as a return so return self dot username sometimes we want to return email sometimes username it's it depends on what we want so i i choose to use this one so that's cool uh i finished th th this one and now we need to move to the admin page here we need to register our new custom user so i add a space here so from models import custom user and we need to register it so we do this by admin side register and we call it custom user that's like that now we'll see our registered users in the admin panel when we log in before making the migrations we need to register our users model in settings we are adding one line additional line in our settings it's a must and you can't skip this without this it will it won't work and it's called off user model and it's equal to users dot custom user you can't make any spelling mistakes or whatever so we, we are real close to the end because we already had a main application for which we already made a migration in the previous tutorial we need to remove all files related to this migration this is the consequence without even doing anything with uh, our authentication and users when Janko does it its initial migration it records that we use the default method instead of custom one so now you might understand why it's a bad idea to move to a custom user in the middle of the project so we remove all the migrations in the main file which we have here i have only one we'll move to trash and we remove our database so we'll create a new one so as you remember i have only one record creator here that's why i haven't i didn't waste my time creating more so Let's go here, database SQLite, let's move to trash. Now we can make our migrations. Python managed by my make migrations. This uh, error sounds reasonable. Sometimes it, you can't understand this, but right now I know what is the problem. This is because I haven't removed the pay, pay cache, and uh, yeah, I need to do that right now. As you can see, don't worry, they will be created again when we run our stuff. Move to trash. Okay, N now it should work. As you can see, it, it made the migrations and without any errors. So that's cool. And this means that we can move with another line with migrate. Migrate. And these migrations were applied also. So now we need to create our custom user. So we again call our manage.py and there is a command create super user. And now I'll create simply a test user where I'll use test as test.test. .test. I use this to, to simply to pass the email test and password. I, also use test as test and yeah it's really simply i just not to forget this stuff i, I create them really simply this super user is like other users and django user objects come with email fields django has built-in reporting features that will email your super users when exceptions are hit which can be really helpful so uh, more information you can of course find here on this uh, email reports uh, page of course all that add this link to the repository of my text tutorial you can visit it later so uh, now we can try to log into our website let's open it and i have here and we navigate to the admin stuff it doesn't exist right that you're right we move to the ah i need to run the server 
run server. That's right. Now let's do this again. I, I don't, I always forget. So right now we have our login page. Easy, isn't it? Uh, I press test and press that. My password is also a test right now. So we can try to log in. And cool, it works. Right now we see that users. And if I would click on it, what I will see, I will see my user test. That's cool, isn't it? And that's really, really simply. And in the future tutorials, I'll show you how we build on this. That will be also quite interesting and easy. We'll create articles and series in our next tutorial through our admin panel. Of course, it will be also really interesting because as you can see, there is no possibilities to do that with our functionality. Even if I go to home, there is nothing else I can do. Okay, well, well, let's see if I go to groups. Also nothing new, but yeah, nothing, nothing. We need to add this functionality. But for example, if we would like to add a new user, that's uh, easy. We, we type details we need here and it will create it manually, but we'll never do this. So in this store, we looked at how to create a custom user model so that we could add additional fields to our primary user identifier in the future registration tutorial, you will see that we can benefit from this model while allowing users to log in using username or email. So this is sometimes really useful and a lot of people don't know how to manage this. And you'll see that it's pretty easy when we use our custom user. That's it for this tutorial. Please like it, subscribe, share, and this of course should really help me to reach more viewers subscribers and so on I, I would really like to help you to grow with my own tutorials not only Django but I plan to release a lot of deep learning machine learning on computer vision and etc tutorial the final code for this tutorial and examples including templates views URLs and all the required files are on my github page you simply go there if you if something doesn't work for you you clone it download and you should get the working version um, i'm splitting to, uh, my files to each tutorial so this will be really helpful so that's it for this part and see you in the next tutorial see you later cool. my friends bye